Biohybrid Robotics has been touted as a critical step towards machine agency. It may be a little bit biocentric, but many researchers believe that giving robots biohybrid components, so mechanical plus biological, is the best way to give a robot autonomy. While we have agentic coding, that's not exactly the same as really making a decision. We have long known that you can hijack an insect's body to make a biohybrid robot. Because they have simple nervous systems, you can just use electrical impulses and operate them. Now this does probably take a note from cordyceps because when cordyceps infects an insect, it doesn't enter the brain. It may hijack the nervous system, but there's a good chance that brain is still operating in there. Same for insect bots, really. But you can at least be happy that we don't consider insects conscious. I mean, you can do the absolute reverse of hijacking a body. You can just give a robot a tiny human brain and have them operate it. But they don't mesh all that well with the kind of AI systems we have now. The tiny human brains do not process linear information very well. However, they can be supportive in taking care of nonlinear information. And this has been done with virtual brain organoids, neural reservoirs, which are essentially an idea in AI where you take information and you put it in a reservoir of sorts. So the linear information can process without collapsing under just having too much stuff, and it's quite effective. One of the major problems with biohybrid robots is that it's hard to operate something that is soft, like musculature. While it can be done, like what you see behind me, this is a robot made from mouse muscle tissue and a computer chip. There are a lot of problems with trying to actually operate a large fleshy object. And that's probably why we haven't hijacked mouse nervous systems yet. Aside from, you know, probably not being ethical. And that is, of course, where our friends the brain organoids come in. Our brains have kind of, you know, evolved to use the body. Some researchers have gone as far as to build a simulation of soft muscle tissue and have virtual brain organoids operate them. Those are neural reservoirs, essentially a virtual version of the tiny human brains we can grow from stem cells and have operate a computer if you would like to. This is actually really exciting because it has a lot of applications beyond whatever kind of eldritch tour this is. This could help amputees operate virtual muscle systems, even 3D printed simulated muscle. And I have talked about this before, but some researchers have been able to make artificial neurons that can interface with our own. Having a local operator could help. Now, biohybrid robotics and artificial intelligence are both still nascent. I don't think it's surprising we haven't made something that is as intelligent as a human, but I think we could get there minus many of the limitations that comes with evolution. A lot of the applications for biohybrids are not in the realm of just horror science or conscious robots, which, while cool, I'm not sure how many applications there are for them. Much of this research has come from medical technology. We're talking about technology that could repair brain damage when it comes to the brain organoids. We're talking about being able to make lab-grown tissues, which has been done all in piecemeal and not put together. Of course, with bodyoids, we're talking about growing embryos to grow organs inside, run experiments on, but take out the brain and the potential of consciousness. We can just grow it all at the same time. That may be incredibly creepy to many people, but this is technology that could really improve quality of life for people who can afford it, which is not me. I just spent the last week arguing with my insurance company to let me see my rheumatologist. Do I really need to live? Is that medically necessary?